What's up everyone for the win Itachi here you know what it is thank you very much for tuning in to another YouTube video onto the YouTube channel of youtube.com slash for the win Itachi where today we're going to be going over demonology warlocks in the very beginning of battle for Azeroth this is a complete guide covering things like stats gems and chance and consumables we're going to be covering the rotation talents without further ado Let's go ahead and dive on into the PvE and PvP aspects of a Demonology Warlock. Alright everybody, so next we're going to be getting into basically the core of every class and every spec in this game has to abide by. And that's their specific stats. So, for a Demonology Warlock, my guide's a little bit different than most. And the reason being is you can go to uh, Warlock websites, you can go to uh, World of Warcraft uh, fan pages, you can go to, uh, YouTube, other YouTube channels and Twitch streamers pages. They will specifically give you the core details onto why they believe their guide is to be true. However, I've done a lot of testing myself as well. And I'm actually going to give you guys a couple of paths on how to play a Warlock. And I'm not just speaking PvE and PvP. I'm speaking on the actual bottom and bringing that underground up into your actual character. So, what I mean by that is I'm going to start off by explaining my stats here. So of course we're playing a warlock we have to have our main stat as intellect 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 wherever you can find intellect which is going to be on almost every single piece of your gear that's the main stat you're going to be looking for as a warlock and it's not the main stat you're really going to have to think about when it comes to the gear because it's already there um, but that is the core stat of your your damage dealing abilities and it's going to be coming from intellect next up you've got a choice here and the reason why i'm giving you guys a choice got questions post down below i'm going to be giving you a choice and i'm going to be giving you guys more in-depth details on the paths that you can take based off of your choice so here you go intellect is number one next up you can either choose either haste which a lot of people uh do believe is the best stat or mastery which a lot of people do believe is the best stat then after that, crit and versatility. Crit and versatility, you can throw out the window. Who the hell cares about them? I will tell you that much right now. All you gotta worry about is intellect, and then either your choice of stacking haste or mastery. And from here on out, this is where the guide's going to split into two. And we're gonna be focusing on, um, next up, gems and chance and consumables. And the reason why it's gonna be splitting into two is because some of you might choose the haste method which is fast casting, fast dots, uh, dots taking, as well as the mastery method, which is what I'm actually gonna be doing, which is a focus on the damage of your pets. So, Demonology Warlocks, it's, it's, a, it's a pet damaging, it's a demon damaging spec, and that's why I like mastery. Now, the reason why I say you can choose either haste or mastery, I've done testing, yes, haste does come out on top. But it comes out on top in such a number that just doesn't even matter. Mastery can pull off those numbers as well. So you can either choose haste or mastery. It is up to you. Now let's go ahead and get into gems and chants and consumables. Um, your main gem that you are going to want to select, and sadly you can only select one because it is a unique equipped gem. Um, is the Kraken's Eye of Intellect. It gives you plus 40 intellect. Again, intellect is your core stat for a warlock, so you're going to at least want one of these bad boys on one of your open gem slots in your gear. And then after that, you're going to want to either spam Quick Owl's Eye, which gives you haste, or you're going to want to go ahead and spam Masterful Tidal Amethyst, which gives you mastery. Plus 40 mastery or plus 40 haste. Again, it depends on which path you have chosen. Haste warlock or mastery warlock. Next up, you are going to uh, select enchants for your ring. You can either choose uh, enchant ring packed of haste, which uh, gives you an increase to haste by 37. Kind of a weird number. Or you can enchant ring packed of mastery, which also gives you mastery by 37. Again, another weird number. So again, it's your choice whether you chose haste or mastery as your core stat to go ahead and stack. And last but not least, you can either do for your enchant weapon, Masterful Navigation, which permanently enchants a weapon to sometimes increase mastery by 50 for 30 seconds, stacking up to five times. 
and the same thing for haste which is quick navigation uh, increases haste by 50 for 30 seconds stacking up to five times Next up, you have a battle potion to select. This is kind of like a cooldown you would use during a fight. Um, increases your intellect by 900 for 25 seconds at a one minute cooldown. And uh, this is for all warlocks. This is your main stat intellect. Um, next up, you've got a flask of endless fathoms, which increases intellect by 238 for one hour. Counts as both a battle and guardian elixir. Um, next up you got a choice again of food. You can either get the Bountiful Captain's Feast, which you're going to be selecting no matter what, if you have the option of someone in your group or yourself putting that down for the group, which will, um, once you have eaten, you will be well fed and gain 100 in a stat for one hour, or in your choices of Swamp Fish and Chips, which you will be given 55 haste for one hour, or Sailor's Pie, which you will be given 55 Mastery for one hour. Again, whether you chose Haste or Mastery, depending on which food you will go ahead and take from there. And last but not least, kinda hate these things, but they're in the game, you gotta get them. Battle Scarred Augment Rune is the newest rune in Battle for Azeroth, which gives you Agility, intellect, and strength increased by 60 for one hour. Now you're asking, what the hell is agility and strength got to do with the warlock? It doesn't matter. It's a freaking augment rune. Just take it, use it, and increase your damage, fam. Because that's what you want. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive on into the next chapter of our guide, which is going to be talents. We will be covering both PvE and PvP. So let's get to it. All right, everybody, moving on to your talent choices. Now, this is where the guy's gonna be going for freaking bonkers because there's a lot to speak about. There's a lot of different play styles and so on and so forth. So we're gonna be covering both PVE and PVP throughout this guide of talents as well as both AOE, single target, you name it, you got it. That's what we're going to be diving on into. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Tier 1. You have a choice of Dreadlash. When the Dreadstalkers charge into battle, their Dread by attack now hits all targets within 8 yards and deals 25% more damage. Demonic Strength. Infuse the Felguard with Demonic Strength and command it to charge your targets and unleash a fell Storm that will deal 400% increased damage or Bile Scourge Bombers. Tear open a portal to the nether above the target location from which several bile scourge will pour out of and crash into the ground over 6 seconds, dealing 771 shadow damage to all enemies within 8 yards. So, my choices for tier 1. Now, for single targets, it is mandatory that you select demonic strength. I hate the talent, it's a boring talent to choose but it is the way that you're going to maximize your damage in single target. So, Demonic Strength is definitely the way to go. Now, for AoE circumstances, a lot of people say Dreadlash. However, I am going to be choosing Bio Scourge Bombers, and I will show you why in a bit. Don't worry, this is the talent that I like for AoE situations. For single target PvE, Demonic Strength. For AoE PvE Bio Scourge Bombers. Single target PvP and in most situations demonic strength. And for AoE situations in PvP where you have a ton of people, World PvP, um, AV, uh, Winter Grass, Toll Barad, just things like that where they're big, massive piles of enemies in one little spot, Bio Scourge Bomb. Tier 2. You have Demonic Calling, Shadow Bolt, and Demon Bolt have a 20% chance to make your next call Dreadstalkers cost one less soul shard and have no cast time power siphon instantly sacrifice up to two wild imps to generate two charges of demonic core and doom inflicts impending doom upon the target causing 7,000 shadow damage after 30 seconds if doom kills the target there is a five percent chance to summon a doom guard to fight for you for 25 seconds so in this situation in tier two for both single targets and AoE of PvE, and single targets and AoE of PvP, doesn't matter the situation, Power Siphon is the way to go, especially in the talent choices that I will be giving you. The reason being is Doom is absolute shit. It does a lot of damage, that is if it does proc. In most situations, that damage is never going to tick. Doom Guard is really cool, but it's only a 5% chance to summon it. 
I don't want to rely on Doom. I'd rather have the forte of Power Siphon. And also, Power Siphon is very nice to be a uh, nice talent to use, especially on the move situation. Which Demonology Warlocks definitely do, especially in PvP. Demonic Calling, just not not a great talent. Tier 3. You've got Demon Skin. Your Soul Leech Absorption it now passively recharges at a rate of 0.5% of maximum health every one second and may now absorb up to 15% of maximum health. Burning Rush increases movement speed by 50%, but also damages you for 4% of your maximum health every one second. Movement impairing effects may not reduce you below 100% normal movement speed. Last until cancelled. Dark Pack sacrifice 20% of your current health. The Shield you returns in 50% of the sacrificed health for 20 seconds. Usable while suffering from control impairing effects. It did change, just so you guys know. It's not your pet, it's you now. So, Tier 3. I actually like this one a lot. Um, because there's some situational cooldowns and all that type of stuff. All three of these talents are great. So, but in my eyes, um, I've got Demon Skin for overall in PvP as well as PvE. No matter what, I like Demon Skin over Dark Pack. You just, it's just a less clunky cooldown to have to deal with. And Demon Skin and Dark Pack are very close. And then, if you want Burning Rush, if you need mobility in both PvP and PvE, You've got tier 4 at level 60. You got From the Shadows, casting called Dreadstalkers causes the target to take 20% additional shadow flame damage from you for the next 12 seconds. Soul Strike, command your Felguard to strike into the soul of its enemy, dealing 1835 shadow damage. Summon Vile Fiend, summon a Vile Fiend to fight for you for the next 15 seconds. So. My choices from here is, I'll tell you right away, From the Shadows is an absolute worthless talent. When it comes to Soul Strike and Summon Vile people like both talents in different situations. However, for my guide, I'm going to stick with Summon Vile Fiend, mainly because it's cooler than Soul Strike. In single target PvE, it definitely is going to deal a lot more damage than Soul Strike. However, in PvP situations, I can see where Soul Strike comes into play, but it is automatic mandatory damage, which sometimes you do need. Sometimes you might need that in a PvE situation as well. But overall, single target, Summon Vile Fiend does outbeat Soul Strike in PvE. And then in uh, PvP, Soul Strike can be a little bit of a circumstance talent where if you really need that mandatory damage with a snap of the finger, you will want to choose Soul Strike. But overall, Summon Vile Fiend does do more damage than Soul Strike. Tier 5. You've got Dark Fury. Reduces the cooldown of Shadow Fury by 15 seconds. Mortal Coil. Horrifies an enemy target into fleeing, incapacitating them for 3 seconds and healing you for 20% of maximum health. Last but not least, you're teleporting of Demonic Circle. This is the best talent choice section because all three are actually goddamn useful. Demonic Circle. It's goddamn useful in any situation. It is a free damn portal. And I actually like to use this over any of the other choices. The only time I will take either Mortal Coil or Dark Fury. In fact, I would take Dark Fury over Mortal Coil for stunning purposes or for CC crowd control purposes. In both PvE and PvE, it doesn't make sense why I would choose that. But Dark Fury is um, only needed in PvE if you need to stun adds for a certain fight. Other than that, Demonic Circle is like your main go-to for PvE situations. Mortal Coil can come in handy. The oddest situations where if you run low on healers and you need a little quick heal here and there. You're about to kill a boss with like 1% left, all your healers are dead, then that's where Mortal Coil comes in. But that's, that's really rare situations, and you're not, you don't really want to rely on that. So, for PvE, Demonic Circle, unless you need to stun Ags, Dark Fury. For PvP, Demonic Circle, unless you want to reduce the cooldown, then Dark Fury. But PvP, I really suggest you go with Demonic Circle anyways. You got enough CC, fam. You're a goddamn Demonology Warlock, so relax on your CCs. Tear God damn six easy one for me soul conduit every soul shard you spend has a 50 percent chance to be refunded inner demons you passively summon a wild imp to fight for you every 12 seconds you have a 10 percent chance to summon an additional demon to fight for you for 15 seconds give me a fell guard summon a fell guard who attacks the target for 15 seconds that deals 25 percent increased damage this fell guard will stun their target when summoned inner demons inner demons inner demons inner demons and inner demons 
PvP, PvE, single target AoE, doesn't matter where I be because I'm going to be choosing the inner demons. Damn sweet. I, goddamn, I should be a goddamn poet. Should join the Migos. Tier 7. Sacrifice souls, Shadow Bolt, and Demon Bolt to deal 5% additional damage per demon you have summoned. Demonic Consumption. Your Demonic Tyrant now destroys and absorbs the remaining power of all your wild imps to empower himself because he's a goddamn greedy bitch. Nether Portal. Tear open a portal to the Twisting Nether for 20 seconds every time you spend soul shards. You will also command demons from the Nether to come out and fight for you. So, it's your choice. You want to be a cool ass warlock? Then choose Nether Portal. If you really care about your damage that much, and it's really, really not by much, it's kind of like that haste and mastery ratio, then choose Sacrifice Souls. So I know this was a lot to talk about, but overall, here's what just went down. So now we're going to be going over the PvP talents. As you guys can see, you have Gladiator's Medallion, Adaptation, or Relentless. In my situation, and in every situation, I find it really nice to be able to control when you get out of a specific CC, and that's Gladiator's Medallion. These two, you don't really have too much control with them, and I don't really like them. And the reason being is, sometimes I might want to sit in a fear, or a stun, because I know I'm not going to take that much damage and I will be able to outlive it. And if you don't choose Gladiator's Medallion and you choose one of these two, well, it might take you out of that sun that you really didn't want to get taken out of. So, yeet. And then now we're going to get into the three core talents of PvP. This is where it gets a little bit fun for me. Now we're going to be getting into the core talents of PvP. Now, this is where it gets fun for me. Because I'm nowhere near an amazing PvP player but these are the talent choices that I like and they're goddamn freaking fun because I've actually used them in a lot of PvP situations lately world PvP, BGs, arenas a lot of damage coming out of this and I just feel very comfortable with these three talent choices so without further ado I'm gonna go through all of them and tell you why I didn't choose them or why I did choose them Singe Magic I'm never gonna have an imp out so fuck it Fell Hunter. I'm never gonna have a Fell Hunter out. Fuck it. Pleasure through pain. Not gonna have a succubus out. Fuck it. Call Fell Lord. Sounds lit. I wanna summon a Fell Lord. Ah, that's pretty damn cool. So I chose it. Curse of Fragility. Reduces the target's maximum health by up to 15%. Useful. Curse of Tongues, forces the target to speak demonic, increasing the casting time of all spells by 30%. Useful, Curse of Weakness reduces target's physical damage dealt by 25%. Really useful. But I didn't choose any of the curses. Why? I didn't want to choose any of the curses, simple as that. Another word, surrounds the caster with a shield that lasts for 3 seconds, reflecting all harmful spells cast upon you. Three seconds is not worth it, man. He sends Drain. Whenever you heal yourself with Drain Life, the enemy's target deals 5% reduced damage to you for six seconds, stacked up to five times. Actually, a really good damn talent. I would choose it, but I didn't. Casting Circle summons a Casting Circle for eight seconds. While within a Casting Circle, you are immune to silence and interrupt effects. The learning Casting Circle causes unending resolve to no longer grant immunity to silence and interrupt effect. I've already got Casting Circle on Unending Resolve, I don't see the point of it, so fuck that talent too. So there's only two talents left to choose from, I chose Call Observer because I just want to summon another demon, because that's pretty damn cool. And Master Summoner, if you didn't choose that, you're a goddamn idiot, because your Call Dread Stalkers is now an instant cast, and you're going to deal so much damage that people are going to hate your goddamn guts. So, Call Fell Lord, Call Observer, and Master Summoner are the way to go. Everybody, so we're going to go ahead and get into the rotation of a Demonology Warlock. I still have my talent tree open because I'm going to go ahead and show you guys which talent choices I am currently going with. I'm going to be showing you a single target rotation as well as AoE rotation. I'm going to first go over single target before we go into AoE because AoE kind of incorporates our single target rotation, which is throwing in a couple of AoE spells into it. 
So, for single target, demonic strength, power siphon, demonic skin, summon vile fiend, demonic circle, inner demons, and nether portal are the way that I'm going to be rocking this, so without further ado, let's get to it. So, core abilities that I'm going to be using, Shadow Bolt, uh, Dreadstalkers, Vile Fiend, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, we've also got Nether Portal, Tyrant, Power Siphon, and of course Demonic Strength, and then we also got a couple of AoE abilities such as Implosion and uh, Fellstorm that I will be using throughout this process as well. So, very simple, always have your Wrath Guard or Fell Guard out, so that is going to be your core pet, that is going to be your main pet. There is actually two single target rotations for a Demonology Warlock with your single spec. So there's two of them to go over with. First one is with Nether Portal. The second one is without. And uh, we're going to go ahead and first not use Nether Portal and I'll show you your normal rotation that you'll be using. So without further ado, always start off the fight with Shadow Bolt spams into using Dreadstalkers on cooldown into using Vile Fiend on cooldown, and then all remaining Soul Shards, while you don't have uh, the ability to cast Red Stalkers and Vile Fiend, you'll use into Hand of Gul'dan whenever you have three or more Soul Shards. You will use Power Siphon in different situations if you are moving and you want an instant Demon Bolt cast, or if you want to go ahead and kill something very quickly, and if you are just in need of Soul Shards, go ahead and use Power Siphon. Uh, Tyrant is your major cooldown that will be buffing you, your pets, everything, you name it, you got it. Um, use Demonic Strength on cooldown, use Fellstorm on cooldown, and of course Implosion is probably never going to be used. So without further ado, single target rotation, let's get to it. Shadow Bolt Spam into, now that we have 5, we're going to go ahead and Dread Stalker cast, we're going to go ahead and Vile Fiend cast, we only have 2 Soul Shards at the moment, and then we need 3 or more for Hand of Gul'dan. Again, like I said, you're going to want to use Fellstorm on cooldown, you're going to want to use Demonic Strength on cooldown, let's go ahead and cast that. You're going to want to use Demon Bolt once you are in need of some shards. You're going to go ahead and use Dread Stalkers on cooldown, Hand of Gul'dan, and now we're going to go ahead and summon our Tyrant because we have so many demons out that we're going to get a massive buff if I'm using him. And that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. Of course, you have other cooldowns such as Trinkets. You have other cooldowns such as uh, PvP Pets. But again, this is the basic rotation in any given situation for a Demonology Warlock. Again, Shadow Bolt is your filler. Dread Stalkers on cooldown. Vile Fiend on cooldown. You want to use your Hand of Gul'dan when you have three or more Soul Shards. Uh, Demon Bolt whenever you have it proc. Power Siphon if you need extra Soul Shards. Bellstorm on cooldown. Demonic Strength on cooldown. And of course, once you have believe you can't cast any more summons for uh, demonic pets or demonic minions that's when you go ahead and unleash your tyrant on the target we're gonna go ahead and go on over with the aoe rotation for a demonology warlock i'm not going to go too into details with um certain situations i'm just going to go over the basics and cooldowns and whatnot so without further ado let's get to it as you can see my talent tree currently consists of vile scourge bombers power siphon demonic skin summon vile fiend demonic circle inner demons and nether portal that is my current uh talent tree for an aoe situation in both pve and pvp all right so now when it comes to the aoe rotation you will use your standard single target rotation which we've already spoken about which includes spells like Shadow Bolt, Dread Stalkers, Vile Fiend, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Nether Portal, Tyrant, as well as Power Siphon. But you will also be incorporating Implosion, AoE number 1, Vile Scourge Bombers, AoE number 2, and of course Fell Storm. So how it works, without me going too deep into details again on the single target rotation, in order to incorporate Implosion, Bow Scourge, Bombers, and Fell Storm, you're going to want to use Fell Storm on cooldown, Bow Scourge, Bombers on cooldown, and rack up Imps for Implosion. It's as simple as that. So, let's go ahead and do so. So, without further ado, I've currently got three Soul Shards. We're going to go ahead and rack that up to a total of five. Now that my pet is in range, you want to use Fell Storm. Use Hand of Gul'dan whenever you have three Soul Shards. Now that Bowser's Bombers is off cooldown and I have two Soul Shards, go ahead and use Bowser's Bombers. 
and keep spamming um, Shadow Bolts until you get three Soul Shards to cast Hand of Gul'dan where you have a ton of imps out and while Felsorm and Ballastgurge Bombers are currently on cooldown, mainly Ballastgurge Bombers, you have Imp Potion ready for action. You have a ton of imps out, go ahead and use them. I just want to say for those of you that tuned into this guide, thank you all very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys did, leave a thumbs up. Check out that description box down below. And if you're new around here, please be sure to subscribe because that's the basic way to go in ahead and support the channel. Stay tuned for some more videos. Thank you. Peace out.